book lovers. That was a uh, little Ludwig van Beethoven in the background playing a uh, E flat piano trio, and um, I'm having a Modelo, piano Modelo. And today's book is um, is Alice Neal, Painted Truths. And before I get started, I, I want to speak briefly about some of the inspiration for this, or some, something I've been drawing inspiration from. I've been listening or watching these videos by um, young black people who basically do reactions to, to pop songs. Uh, I'm going to mention three of them, and I'll put links in, uh, in uh, my description for this one. Jamel, a.k.a. Jamal, Chris and Regia TV, and Twins, The New Trend. And um, they, they basically, they mostly do like, you know, kind of, a lot of the stuff they do is like 60s and 70s classic rock. And I would say mostly 70s and some 80s too. Um, which is, is, is kind of surprising, kind of weird in a way. Um, and I think part of the reason uh, that I find it so appealing, and so do a lot of other people apparently, is that uh, we're all old boomers. I'm a, I'm a kind of a young boomer, but I am a boomer. Um, and it's flattering to see uh, black millennials discover music that we grew up liking. Um, and they, they ha one of the sticks is that they're, they're never critical. They're mostly just like loving what they're hearing, which is, I don't know if that's totally honest. I mean, in some way I'd like them to occasionally say, man, this song sucks. Um, but they're responding to requests and, and their requests are coming from their audience. And so they're keeping their audience happy. Uh, anyway, uh, in Twins, uh, The New Trend, they always describe every song as a banger. And this book is a banger. And Jamal, whenever he hears like a, a song that has like a, a really dirty, bluesy guitar solo, he describes it as having the stank, the stank on it. And Alice Neal is a painter who does have the stank on it. So with their inspiration, where they're, you know, they're, they're, I, I'm, I'm not willing to be totally uncritical of the books I read, but mostly I, I'm reviewing books I like, so I guess I can't, I can't give myself a pat on the back for, for being a totally honest critic. Um, but uh, they, uh, they, they are always positive, and it just makes. And listening to those songs even more enjoyable to see someone else liking them. And in that way, they flatter their, I suspect, mostly white viewers. I have no idea, though, what their, their, the demographics of the viewership is. But, you know, if you want to make uh, old boomers feel good, tell them that the music they liked when they were young is really good. And be surprised by it, you know. Hear, you know. A Led Zeppelin song for the very first time and just like be oh wow what is this which is sort of what they do anyway Alice Neal painted truce this was an exhibit at the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston that I didn't see unfortunately it was in 2010 so I could have seen it but for whatever reason I didn't um, and uh, I think I got the catalog from the the museum bookstore because it might have been on sale um, Anyway, Alice Neal was a, uh, a portraitist, mainly, although she did other things besides portraits, but mostly did portraits. She lived from 1900 to 1984. She was kind of a lefty Greenwich, uh, Greenwich Village uh, uh, painter. She, she w was part of the WPA. Apparently she got fired from the WPA a couple times for whatever reason, I'm not sure. Um, and this catalog, which is a big, you know, big monograph, um, has four long essays in it. Like about the first hundred pages of the of the, the catalog are essays. Um, Tamar Garb uh, wrote 
comparing Neil's work to other strains in portraiture, especially from the 19th and 20th century, um, and, and wrote about how in the 20th century, portraiture had kind of fallen into disfavor as a uh, as an art form, um, as a subsection of painting. And when you think about it, really, portraiture was a uh, Amongst my favorite painters, uh, English painters, are um, Thomas uh, Gainsborough, um, George Romney, those guys from the, the uh, late 18th and early 19th century. And that's all they did was portraits because it was really impossible for an English painter back then to make a living doing, um, you know, what, what Italian and French painters could do all the time you know, big religious paintings, history paintings, etc. So they had to sort of, you know, go out and find uh, landed gentry to, to paint portraits of. And those some of those are great portraits. Um, and in a way, Alice Neal is not doing something totally dissimilar. Obviously, her style is very dissimilar, but... And she's not really going after the wealthy to paint. She paints a lot of sort of, you know, quasi-proletarian subjects earlier in her career, but also paints a lot, a lot of people who are in the art world. Um, that's uh, one of her favorite subjects, people in her world, in a way. So the four es essays, uh, Tamar Garb com writes, comparing Neil's work to other portraitists. Uh, Jeremy Lawson discuss discusses the psychology of her portraits, and that's an important subject because she's not you know she's not Andy Warhol she's not taking Polaroids and then then painting them and there's not like a, any sort of ironic distance uh, she's not like Philip Perlstein for example who's uh, kind of a contemporary and, and whom uh, Robert Storr writes about his, his work is almost completely formal um, her, her portraits are, you know, they have a kind of an expressionist feel to them. Not quite Max Beckman, but definitely sort of closer to Max Beckman than, uh, than any of her, her contemporaries in the United States. And then uh, Barry Walker. And so St Storr writes about that. Um, and he also writes about how he met her and he was nervous that she would ask him to pose naked. Um, and so he, Philip Perlstein was, was painting it around the same time Neil was painting. And uh, Neil knew, knew him and knew his wife and painted a, a great portrait of, of Perlstein's wife. And the last essay is uh, by Barry Walker. And it's, it's about the formal concerns in Neil's work. And here, here's a, a really interesting um, uh, bit of trivia. One of her early portraits is of a guy named Kenneth Fearing who wrote a, a kind of a pot boiler murder mystery uh, novel called The Big Clock. And uh, that got picked up by Hollywood and made into a Hollywood movie in 1948. And it features an artist who um, tries to buy back a painting uh, that she painted for the WPA, who's based on, uh, apparently, based on Alice Neal and paid, played by Elsa Lanchester. I haven't seen the movie, but I'm interested. So anyway, I'm going to talk about a few specific paintings. Um, let's start first with uh, one from 1960, uh, Frank O'Hara. She painted two portraits of Frank O'Hara, and as as followers of this uh, this series of book reports know, Frank O'Hara was a well known poet in the New York School, um, and he was also a art critic and a curator. And apparently she painted his portrait specifically to try and get him interested in her work. Uh, and he never, apparently never wrote about her, so I guess it didn't work. But, you know, they're interesting portraits. And his first portrait is like more formal, but this one that I'm showing you, he's, you know, he's, he's not, it's not flattering. It's a tough portrait. Um, then uh, in uh, 1962, she painted Robert Smithson. Famous for uh, Spiral Jetty, of course. But in 1962, he'd not yet developed his theories of land art. And uh, so she caught him just before he started becoming famous in the art world. Um, 
he really changed his uh, philosophy after marrying Nancy Holt, who was also a land artist. But I, I like this painting. He looks uh, thoughtful and intellectual. And um, anyway, that's uh, Robert Smithson. Then uh, there's a double portrait of uh, David Bourdain and Gregory Batcock, Batcock from 1970. And uh, they were a gay couple. So it was uh, kind of a opposing as a, a couple's portrait. And uh, they were both art critics. And Batson was also, interestingly, the subject of, a, of an artwork at the, ninth, at the 2014 Whitney Biennium by, and I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong, but Joseph Greechley. And uh, it was basically a collection of archive, archival material that Greechley found about Batcock. And Batcock was uh, murdered in 1980, and that murder remains unsolved. Then this portrait of Andy Warhol from 1970 is, is, is brutal. So Warhol has his eyes shut, as you can see, and his shirt is off, and he's wearing a, a truss around his, his torso, which apparently he had to wear because he needed to hold his guts in from after getting shot by uh, Valerie Solanas. It's a very vulnerable portrait. I mean, you know, his shirt's off and he's showing his wound, essentially. And he's kind of closing his eyes, like, don't look at me. I'm not looking at you. And uh, and then he's he's against this almost completely blank background, which I thought was was pretty cool looking. Um, then uh, two years later, he uh, Neil paints Jackie Curtis as a boy. And Curtis was a uh, Warhol superstar. And I should mention that Gregory Batcock also appeared in several Warhol movies. And uh, Curtis was mainly, uh, he performed mostly in drag, but he wasn't transsexual. He didn't consider himself a woman like, say, um, Holly Woodlawn did. Um, so he would sometimes go as a boy. And Neil painted two portraits of him, one in drag and then this one as a boy. And uh, Lou Reed sings about Curtis in Walk on the Wild Side, and he, he sings about that that desire sometimes to be a boy. Um, Jackie is just speeding away, thought she was James Dean for a day, etc. And uh, this one is uh, Louise Nochlin and Daisy. Louise Nochlin was an art historian, or it, I guess, I'm, I'm not sure if she's still alive or not. Um, and Daisy, uh, her daughter. Nochlin is famous for, and this was painted in 1973. She's famous for her 1971 essay, Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists? And it's, it's, an, uh, it's, it's an epochal essay. I recommend searching it out. And it was sort of a, uh, a hand grenade of feminist thought in the art world. Okay, so we're going back in time, back from the 70s to the 1930s with this crazy painting of Joe Gould um, Neil, Neil was willing to paint male nudes, uh, which was not really for women of her generation. It's not really an acceptable subject. Um, I, I say it's not really an acceptable subject. Here we are looking at one, so it's acceptable to us, but she didn't grow up in, uh, at the time when it would have been normal to see women painting male nudes. And what's, what's amazing about this one and Another one we'll see is that uh, she's not afraid to show some some dick, and not just one, but she gives a Gould three penises, uh, including one that's hanging from the chair he's sitting on, and then two on either side of him, and uh, like like a uh, like generations of male painters who painted nudes, she's concentrating on the dick. She's, she's really giving it pride of place. She, she devotes as much detail to it as, as she does to his face, for example. So all these, uh, you know, great uh, 17th, 18th, 19th century painters of nudes who lavish detail on the ass and the breasts and so on, 
she's sort of getting her revenge on that that those uh that style and uh and it's a very you know dick centered painting another very dick centered painting from 1972 is is john perrault he was also an art critic he died in 2015 i think and it's a very sexualized pose his legs are spread and his his dick's flopping out um and she's really sweating the details on 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 the, on, on perrault and he on his website wrote that he had to like pose for her 17 times which she thought it was fewer because usually her portraits would require you know two or three um sittings but i'm sure perrault's memory even if perrault's memory is exaggerated i'm sure he had to pose a lot um and but she was not afraid of doing female nudes she did several including this self-portrait from 1980. So she's, you know, she's 80 years old in this painting. She's nude and uh, because she's nude and old, it's kind of a doubly taboo breaking. Um, and it's it's kind of, she, she started it a couple of years earlier and then put it aside, but apparently her son uh, urged her to complete it, so she took it up and finished it in 1980. Then, uh, in 1981, she did this this portrait of uh, Gus Hall as a as an old man. Gus Hall was uh, had been the leader of uh, Communist Party USA, and it's interesting to think about that because you know he he was a man whose entire political life was an utter failure. The Communist Party in the United States never caught on. He ran for president like three times, including 1984, where he lost to Ronald Reagan, as you might recall. Um, and, you know, his he was a hardcore Stalinist to the end, apparently. But this, this, this portrait of an old guy, you know, facing the end of his life with this big Russian hat um, is, is, is warm and definitely is sort of like, you know, you think, uh, it's something that an old lefty could do with affection, which she was an old lefty. So that is, uh, Alice Neal painted truce. Uh, looks like it had, was a great exhibit. I wish I'd seen it, but at least I got to read the, uh, monograph and the monograph is really good. I recommend it. Thanks very much.